So there are a ton of two PC stream setup videos on YouTube. But the one thing I noticed is that most people are using two big PCs or one PC with two systems inside. Even my own personal live streaming setup looks messy with my stream PC on the floor and my gaming PC on the desk. A two PC setup doesn't need to look this gross. So I decided to create a two tiny PC streaming setup that looks so much better. budget conscious, the cheapest way is to use two custom mini ITX builds, but I wanted to go smaller and opted for a Ghost Canyon NUC as my gaming PC and a mini ITX build as the stream PC. Visually, I feel this is the best way to help you figure out what works best for your space. The Ghost Canyon NUC is five liters, incredibly small. Like look how tiny this is beside a Fractal Node 202, the really popular NZXT H1 and a banana. The NUC is packed with a RTX 2070 mini, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and an i9-9980HK processor. It's a mobile processor that you'd find in an expensive laptop, but paired with a full RTX 2070 desktop GPU. Faster than any comparable laptop, but slower than a desktop with an i9-9900K. The RAM and storage slots are easily upgradable, but unlike a laptop, you can upgrade the CPU and GPU. The CPU is part of this compute element that combines the IO, motherboard, and CPU. This is in the form of a card, like think of a PCIe card that slots into a data board inside this chassis. The idea is down the road, when it's time to upgrade, you simply just buy another compute element, remove the old one, and place the new one inside. I like the modularity aspect of this, little fuss for connecting connecting cables, but of course this all comes at a very high price tag associated with it. It also begs the question on how long or if Intel plans to continue supporting this. Thermals, acoustics are all fantastic, but I only recommend the NUC to individuals who want a super small form factor, easily upgradable, and don't mind paying a premium. The streaming PC is a bit more modest. I used a Fractal Node 202 Mini ITX case, an ASUS ROG Strix B460i motherboard, an i5-10600K CPU, which for fun I tried using this old Sandy Bridge second gen Intel stock fan as a CPU cooler. Bad idea! So I went out and bought a Noctua cooler to replace it and temps are so much better. There's 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz time tick Hynix RAM and a 500 gigabyte Samsung 960 NVMe SSD. That's right, we're using no GPU for the stream PC. This Intel CPU has an integrated GPU to power the monitor and six cores to handle the stream using H.264 encoding. It's more than plenty to stream fluidly. As you can see here, I'm streaming live on YouTube and the CPU is not even breaking a sweat. Speaking of monitors, I went with two HP Omen 27i to keep a matching aesthetic. These are gaming monitors, but don't overdo the gaming design. They have these fairly thin bezels and a really cool back plate that houses the IO and some RGB, which of course you can turn off if RGB is not your thing. More importantly, the LG Nano IPS display it uses is exceptional. It's an IPS QHD display, 165 hertz refresh rate with a one millisecond response time. Supports G-Sync, FreeSync, it's 10-bit, and has great color gamut. If you're looking for a 1440p gaming monitor that can be used for content creation, I highly suggest these. The keyboard is called the Keychron K2. I'm sure some of you have seen this in tons of tech YouTube videos. It's a solid mechanical keyboard that can be used wirelessly or wired. The keys are deep, tactile and feel great to game and type on while taking up very little space. The mouse is the Razer Viper Ultimate. It's light, feels good to use, has a low latency, wired or wirelessly, and works perfectly for gaming or productivity. Now, you're probably thinking, Matt, two computers, one keyboard and mouse, you're a maniac. I'm using this really cool software called ShareMouse that allows you to control two computers with one keyboard and one mouse. As long as the software is installed on both machines and on the same network, it works flawlessly. 
I can just move my cursor to the left of the screen and it automatically switches to the other computer. It's not free unfortunately, but totally worth the investment. To get the gaming PC to talk to the stream PC, I'm using an Elgato HD 60S capture card. This processes the audio and video from the gaming computer. Headphones are the Corsair Virtuoso. I've shown these off before in previous setups. They're comfortable, have great sound, and work with any device. The microphone is the Elgato Wave 3, a USB condenser that retails for $200. Totally worth the price, as this is one of the few microphones at this price point that includes a built-in compressor combined with software that acts as a mixer. You can control your audio feeds through the Elgato software. Mixing is usually done with expensive hardware, but now we have it part of the microphone and that's fantastic. This is exactly what the Elgato Wave 3 sounds like. If I rail really loud, the compressor will keep the volume low and it'll prevent the stream from peaking. This is a test of the microphone from Elgato. The webcam is an old Logitech C922 camera. It's a good webcam to start, but the quality will never match an actual camera. But here's the thing. Most streamers have their face so small on the bottom right hand corner of the screen that the quality looks so much better than full screen. A lot of professional streamers still use this camera today. Finally, the desk is a standing desk. It's called the Anthro Desk. I featured this in a video two years ago. Yes, I don't just buy things for the sake of buying things. I like to show stuff in the long term so you can see how it holds up. Well, it still works great with no issues. Just note that if you buy this desk, you'll have to buy your own tabletop separately. The one I'm using is a solid wood tabletop from Ikea. It's called the Girton and it's 61 inches wide. So that's my two tiny PC stream setup. The idea is not so much to recommend the Ghost Canyon NUC as the best gaming PC, but to give you options depending on the space you're working with. Ideally, too many ITX builds offer the best bang for your buck, but you might like the smaller form factor the NUC has to offer, even if you have to pay a premium. Links to everything will be in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more setups like this, let me know as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.